Uh, welcome everyone. This is the first of two integrated home competition winners webinars that we're going to be hosting this year. Um, these are really intended to give everyone a bit more information on this year's winners and give uh, CE members and partners the opportunity to ask any questions they may have about these products. So, to provide a super brief background on the petition and why we do this, um, the integrated home competition was built out of this idea that of basically the the residential home of the future and what that looks like. And at CE, that is described and encompassed in our integrated home initiative, which describes that home. And specifically, it's a connected, fuel neutral, grid interactive, efficient home where all the systems, lighting, appliances, HVAC, etc all can seamlessly communicate and optimize valued amenities to both consumers and members. So that means slightly different things for the consumers and for the utilities. On the consumer side, um, the integrated home can address consumer preferences automatically. Uh, through doing so, it can help also improve consumer experience through better customization and personalization. And for those reasons, as well as possible program participation, um, and demand response participation, these devices can add value to the consumer's energy experience. For utilities, um, the integrated home can really react to the dynamic value of energy. It'll respond to utility or third party signals for demand response and overall can contribute to safe, low cost and reliable energy. As I said before, the, the integrated home competition is really a method for us to help build out what this home can look like and find products that match this vision. So we're really seeking these new and innovative residential products that are coming to the market that fit this vision. And the competition is designed to reward manufacturer leadership and help to promote these solutions that demonstrate interoperability, reliability, and simplicity. I do wanna thank our competition sponsors. We have a great group of them. So you're getting a two for one deal. So uh, my name's David Leeser. I'm the R&D team leader for Idea America's uh, residential AC uh, retail products. So window AC, portable ACs, dehumidifiers, those products fall under me and my team. And then Sarah Chinberg uh, on my team is our regulatory engineer. So she's pretty heavily involved with the CE team and uh, just different aspects uh, of CE and uh, other regulatory and agency bodies. So, um, so yeah, so we're excited to present uh, on our, what we call our packaged window heat pump. Um, and so what this essentially is, is a window mounted uh, heat pump with uh, cold climate capability. Um, and for those, you know, Harold, you might be familiar with this, but others, uh, I'm not sure if you're not from the New York area or what, but. This is essentially born out of uh, New York Power Authorities, New York City Housing Authority, and uh, NYSERDA, their, uh, you know, basically collaboration to create NYPA's Clean Heat for All Challenge, where essentially uh, NYCHA was, uh, or is looking to replace their steam heat systems, uh, which are, you know, fired, I guess, either by natural gas or fuel oil uh, on the boilers. Um, but replace those systems um, with an air source heat pump that can mount in the window uh, to kind of to basically help their sustainability efforts and electrification transition. So um, this was uh, one of the winners from that category um, where we'll be providing right now we're in a demonstration phase with them, but providing, uh, you know, uh, essentially 20,000 units to help retrofit their buildings over the next several years. So. Um, so basically what the product is, it's a self-contained, uh, you know, window heat pump. So like most window ACs, right, you know, that mount in the window, pretty much just do cooling only today. Um, this is a heat pump version with a um, 9,000 BTU uh, heat output, and that's at 17 Fahrenheit. Uh, and a lot of these metrics you'll see uh, if you have the question why a lot of it was initially dictated uh, by the NIPA spec, the clean heat for all challenge spec. Um, so that's where a lot of it uh, is driven from. So part, you know, one of those being the 9,000 BTUs. Uh, it's also 9,000 BTUs cooling. Um, 
And so, um, so it's basically a three quarter time, you know, we'll, we'll cover most, uh, living rooms and bedrooms, uh, which is what NYCHA is looking to, to, um, to condition. So, uh, it is a 120 volt 15 amp, uh, system. So it'll just plug into a, a wall outlet, just like a, a normal window AC today. Uh, it is an inverter compressor with vapor injection, um, but has cold climate capability. So we can function uh, all the way down to negative 13 Fahrenheit. Um, and we do have the ability to do 100% heating at five degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we are using R32 refrigerant. So we've been using that in a lot of our um, IDEA window AC products for years. Um, so we're very familiar with that. So, um, you know, it's got great uh, performance and efficiency, so it was a it was an easy, uh, obvious choice with the low GWP uh, properties as well. Um, and it is, you know, one of the big requirements was being a DIY installation, so that way NYCHA and um, you know their maintenance crew can essentially go in, retrofit apartments, and install these without needing any uh, certain licenses, whether for refrigerant or uh, electrical upgrades or plumbing upgrades for condensate. Um, so it's very much a two person. It is a two person job um, since these are larger units to be able to hit some of those, you know, uh, cold, cold temperatures. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, basically the you can see some of the installation steps right there at the bottom of the screen. So it comes with an included installation bracket. So that's, you know, step one. Uh, and then the one of the biggest unique features of this uh, and what we kind of designed so it could fit in most windows, especially with some, you know, some that have a smaller uh, vertical opening um, is the outdoor section uh, will rotate flat. Uh, so you kind of see in that second step and then you place it on the installation bracket and the outdoor portion of the installation bracket has a couple uh, gas shocks on it uh, to basically help uh, ease that uh, rotation down uh, into that final uh, installation that you can see in the bottom right. Um, so we, um, you know, it was definitely a real unique challenge of, you know, having a big enough condenser coil to achieve the performance that, uh, you know, NYCHA and NYPA were requesting, but still be install, be able to install and, uh, you know, a lot of the windows out there. Um, probably the biggest challenge uh, from a technical standpoint was that the specification um, did not allow for dripping or freezing of the condensate water. Uh, so those, uh, especially people in New York City, you get that drip, drip, you know, tinny noise from the unit upstairs. Um, they did not want that as well as they didn't want any freezing of any condensate, especially in winter. So, um, so it does have a self-contained uh, condensate system uh, for cooling as well as the defrost melt water, uh, defrost melt water. So it'll handle uh, all of that internally within the unit. Um, so as far as, you know, with the, the integrated home competition tenants, so when it comes to energy efficiency, so the, the typical window AC, uh, you know, the current, um, rating for efficiency is CER, which is combined energy, energy efficiency ratio. So it does have, you know, uh, the currently the highest uh, value at 16, um, and so, uh, you know, that's the cooling metric. And then on the heating side, uh, we do have a COP of 3.5 uh, at 47, I think I'm gonna have to check that, but 2.35 at 17 Fahrenheit, uh, which was, uh, you know, one of the targets from the NIFA spec. We also did do uh, some 210, 240 testing as well, since I know that's a pretty common metric, especially with the CEE membership. Um, so a SEER 2, we were able to achieve up to 21.8 and an HSPF 2 of 11.6. Um, so, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll translate a little better for most of you all, uh, compared to, uh, the CER rating, uh, that's typical with the, uh, window AC. On the, uh, load management side and demand flexibility. So, uh, for NYCHA, they do have backnet enabled buildings. And so one of their, their requests was to have a backnet system. Um, and kind of a, uh, you know, icing on top of the cake was a wireless mesh, if we could do that. So we were able to deliver that to where they could, you know, integrate with their building management systems using a wireless mesh backnet system uh, that uses the Zigbee protocol. Um, we are also going to have, you know, a Wi-Fi model. Um, and we've done this in the past where we've integrated with demand response, um, you know, systems of different members. So we've done that with Con Ed in the, uh, in the past and thank Kiko with our standard window ACs. So if that is an interest of some of the members, you know, we can definitely uh, talk with our um, IOT team and system uh, or group 
and you know figure out uh, ways we can do that. Our current app, the the Mydea Smart Home app. Um, so we do, you know, even today we do have geolocation capabilities. We have scheduling features. So even just right out of the box, you know, there's different uh, energy saving features that customers can use. Um, and we will also uh, we've been rolling out Matter. So I think you know Lynn mentioned that, right? Matter enabled. So we do have the you know our Mydea U, the first uh, window AC that has Matter uh, capabilities. Uh, so we can start integrating with other components within the whole home and, you know, systems and, uh, um, you know, whatever the customers uh, want to do to integrate for better control, but also, you know, improved energy efficiency, uh, you know, with the, the whole system, uh, you know, not just the unit. Um, as far as benefits and uh, amenities to the consumer, so that DIY, right, there's no new electric, you know, being that 120 volt, 15 amp circuit or mechanical requirements for the install. We do have that humidity uh, capability and control with the uh, condensate system. So in the, in the winter, we can add humidity to the room on those dry days uh, if that's desired. Um, you know, one of the big obvious benefits is once it's installed on the window compared to a normal window AC, you know, you get a lot of your window back. Um, you know, so since it's a saddle type uh, installation, so we'll get a lot more of that light back in, especially, you know, those multifamily homes, which is really a, a big target. Uh, for this product, um, and then noise, right? So we've got uh, sound operational sound levels down to 36 dB. Um, you know, so definitely getting out there uh, in the much uh, low end, and you know, comparable with a lot of those split systems out there. And then from a security privacy standpoint, all of our Wi-Fi units, whether the PWHP or other, we do IOXT certification, uh, cyber cert security certification um, for those models. Um, so as far as market adoption, you know, we really see this as a big solution for multifamily um, buildings looking to transition, you know, cost effectively to uh, for electrification. Um, so, you know, there's been groups and NYCHA included where they've investigated split systems. So there's obviously, you know, they those are great systems, uh, you know, for the right application, but sometimes with multifamily and large buildings, running new electric or running line sets, you know, from the roof, you know, down six stories or however many stories, you know, can get pretty, uh, pretty cumbersome uh, from an installation standpoint and cost. So when it's window mounted, we can, we can definitely uh, still get that room, uh, you know, AC and room heat pump uh, capability, uh, but with a lot more of a cost effective installation. Um, you know, so we can do, uh, you know, single room heating and cooling, you know, especially if there's any add ons or even, you know, single family homes that you want a little bit of an easier installation or more cost effective solution. If they've got a, a hot room upstairs or, you know, a, a, an addition on the outside that just doesn't have that great insulation for, for heating, they, uh, you know, this is another great option. Um, and, you know, even emergency heating cooling. So, I uh, had some interest from, uh, you know, discussions with uh, groups like FEMA, like, hey, this could be a great option for emergency adoption if it's being 120 volt can run off a generator. So, um, and again, like I mentioned, those electric electrification retrofits, uh, especially on the multifamily side, this is a great, great product for that. So the current big product uh, or program and pilot that we're working with is NYCHA. Um, so currently we're in that demonstration phase. Um, and uh, that's kind of like the, the main uh, program we're working with and, and focusing on. So we installed units back in July, and so they've been running since then. Now starting to get into that heating season uh, for them. So we'll start learning. You know, we learned quite a bit on the cooling side, so then we're going to start learning uh, on, the, on the heating side. Um, and, and so far, I've had great response from the tenants and from NYCHA. Um, and, but, you know, any other utility pilots and programs, we're definitely open uh, to those. So small scale pilots are definitely an option now. I think I saw a question about Canada. We'll have certification in Canada uh, in November. So we can start doing pilots uh, in Canada, um, you know, later this year. Uh, so that's, that's a, definitely an option. Um, and then large scale uh, available, availability is what we're thinking fall, later 2024. Uh, where we can start ramping up, you know, larger shipments. Um, but yeah, whether energy efficiency groups or housing authorities or utility groups, we're definitely uh, open to, to uh, you know, any pilot or program that you all have. Uh, just let myself or Sarah know, uh, definitely reach out to us and we can, we can go from there. So I think right now, you know, just a way we're kind of capping as far as small scale is uh, around 30 units. 
uh, but you know we may have flexibility for more. It's just a matter of time uh, and, and shipment. So um, yeah, so I think that's uh, 